Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all the crafty goodness that I have worked on over the past week. Today is March 1st, 2021 and it is a knitting episode this week. I have a few things to show you. One's currently on me. Um, my hair never cooperates. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm really excited for this episode. There are two places that you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily, and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. And if you like what you see in today's episode, please make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Let's jump right on in. Um, so before I talk about this beautiful sweater that I am wearing, I do have one other finished object that I wanted to talk about right off the bat, and they are a new design that I have come up with. They are not named yet. Oh, this is gonna drive me nuts. Hair is fixed. <laughs> Um, so they are a new design that I've come up with and they are out for testing right now or the testing application is available right now. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys um, the heads up about that so that you could apply. Um, Instagram has known about it for a couple days. So if you haven't been following me over on Instagram, I definitely suggest you do so. Um, I definitely give more frequent updates over there. But I wanted to let you guys know here as well that I am taking applications for testers and those applications will be open until this Wednesday. So I believe that is March 3rd, uh, 2021. So here are the socks that will be available for testing. I'll just hold up one. So they are this gorgeous lace pattern. Kind of looks cable-y, but there is no cabling whatsoever. It's all lace. Uh, one by one rib here, beautiful textured heel flap and a wedge toe. Um, this pattern is available in three sizes. I will be taking testers for all three of those sizes. Um, and yeah, I knit these on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a US one. This yarn, if you're curious, is from Autumn and Indigo Yarn. It is their classic sock base, and this colorway is Winter Bloom. So I think, yeah, that's all I'll say about these, just because it's a new pattern and I don't want to obviously give away too much. But if you are interested in testing this sock pattern for me, be sure to look down below in the description. I will probably try and make sure it's the very first link in the description and you can apply to test these for me. So other than that little piece of news, we might as well jump into the second finished object that I have, which is this gorgeous sweater that I'm wearing. This is the Nurtured Sweater. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I did knit it out of Woolberry Fiber Co. yarn. This is their Berry Natural Base, which is a 100% merino yarn, and this colorway is called My Favorite Sweater, which is pretty apt because I think this might be my favorite hand-knit sweater I have ever made. Um, it's this gorgeous, I wish you could feel it, this worsted weight yarn is just so cushy and wonderful. It's not itchy, which is amazing because I've always been so worried about knitting out of straight merino yarn um, because... I've come to know it as itchy, but it really isn't itchy at all. So very, very pleased with that. Um, I will stand up and give you a quick peek of it and then I can talk about it a little bit more. Um, just cause you can't see my face when I'm standing. And it's a little weird to talk like that. <laughs> so I don't have jeans on. I kind of wish I do looking at this now, but the sweater is <laughs> cropped um, and I have crazy leggings on. So you're welcome for that. Um, <laughs> But the sweater is cropped and cute. There isn't really much shaping to it. It's definitely more of a boxy shape with um, more snug arms. And yeah, I'm sitting down because I feel weird. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I definitely should have worn jeans. I had this on with jeans yesterday and it looked really cute, but I forgot that I was going to have to stand up to show this and I have my cozy leggings on. Anyways, I knit a medium for this sweater and I have said a couple times, but I'll reiterate this again, just in case it's the first time you're here, um, that I did knit a medium, but I dropped down needle size quite a bit from what the pattern called for. 
So for the ribbing, I ended up using a 3.5 millimeter needle, which is a US 4. And for the rest of the body, I used a 4 millimeter needle, which is a US 6, um, which again is down quite a few sizes from what the pattern called for. When I did my gauge swatch, which I rarely do, but I did gauge swatch this time, um, my fabric, I just didn't like how loose it was. It was too... The best way I can say it is too see-through. Um, I really didn't like it, so I decided to drop down the needle size so that the fabric would become um, more closed, thicker, cushier. Uh, that's what I did. <laughs> um, normally, I would probably be a size small. Um, I don't know if the pattern calls this a medium. It might just be size number three that I knit, but anyways. That is the size that I knit. I'm very happy with that. I think it turned out quite well. I love the snug feeling of the sleeves. That's definitely my preference is a more fitted sleeve and then a boxier body. It does, like I said, I should have worn jeans. It looks really, really cute with high-waisted jeans on. Um, but anyways, as for my experience knitting this, I don't know what I did. I made many mistakes. I had to fudge a lot with this. Um, the sleeves went perfectly. No issues with the sleeves. They worked out well. And then I got to the body and I knit the body up to where the sleeves were supposed to be attached. Attached the sleeves. And suddenly I had way too many stitches for the body, which made no sense. Um, I did everything the pattern was supposed to do. I triple double checked it um, and I had too many stitches so I ended up just decreasing those extra stitches to be where I was supposed to and then continue knitting up with all of these raglan decreases um, and then I got to the end of all the raglan decreases where I was supposed to put the ribbing in for the neck and I had or no what I I finished the raglan decreases and then you hit a part where there is short row shaping in the front to make the front dip down a little bit more that's what it was and I did all of my shaping all of that went well I didn't think I had issues until I realized that I think I had 11 stitches for this shoulder no I had 10 for this shoulder and eight for this one and I was supposed to have 11 for the tops of both of these shoulders so again, I just decreased some stuff and I think I got both of the shoulders to eight stitches or something like that. And then I just made it work. So I think I might've had to decrease the odd stitch in here just to make it so that this um, two by two rib would work out. And I don't know, like I don't, when I sit back like this, I don't see any of the mistakes. So I think I'm pretty happy no one will know if I don't tell them, right? Um, and as for the sleeves, this is the first time on a sweater where I have had to seam the underarm of something before. I've never seamed anything actually. Um, so I ended up using the mattress stitch to seam. There was a hole in the underarm from where I attached it. Um, I used the mattress stitch for that and I'm very happy with how that closed everything up. It was easy. It went very well. I'm super pleased with that so seaming definitely is not as scary as I thought it was um and I'm glad I gave it a try because I would definitely pick another sweater that had seaming on it again so yeah I don't know if I'm going to start another sweater soon I have a couple shawls on the needles now that are quite big so I don't know if I want another big project on the needles or not but I'm really happy to have this done and maybe it is shawl season now for me because the weather is starting to get nicer and I can't wear them anyways when it's too hot out. So we'll see. I haven't been in sock mode, which is weird. I think this is maybe the third episode where I really haven't had much to show sock wise. So that's a little weird for me, but um, I'm definitely, definitely glad to have this sweater done off the needles wearing it, loving it. Um, if you do have any questions, let me know down below. Um, if I missed saying anything about the sweater, I'm happy to help you out. Um, and that is pretty much all I have to say about my nurtured sweater. 
so that's all I have for finished objects. Let's move on to works in progress. This first one here is something that I haven't shown before because it's a new cast on. Um, I've been waiting for this yarn to come for a little while now, probably two, three weeks. It got stuck at um, a post office and took forever and whatever. <laughs> But all of that aside, I am knitting a Midsummer Rose shawl. Um, this pattern was originally in Lina Magazine issue 5. It is, I think, now available for individual purchase on Ravelry as well. But I have Lina Magazine here, so I am using the pattern out of there. Um, and I might as well show you the pictures in here because they're so pretty. So this is the Midsummer Rose shawl. This is what I'm knitting. I have wanted to knit this for so long and I'm so excited to be able to cast it on. There's a couple more pictures here. Absolutely beautiful. Definitely need to pay attention to it because it's full lace. Like there is no easy thinking on this one. I guess every, mm, no, not even. I was gonna say every second row is just um, straight purling, but it is not, because once I get past the chart that I am on now, every single row is going to be doing something. That's okay though, because I'm loving it. It's been really fun. Um, so I've changed, again, a couple things about how I'm knitting this pattern up. The pattern does call for a fingering weight yarn. I've decided to use a lace weight and drop my needle size a little bit just to make it look a little bit more delicate and airy um, and it seems to be working to my advantage so far so I'm happy about that. Um, and the lace weight yarn that I did pick is from Madeline Tosh so that is why I was waiting for a while for it because they do die to order for all of their yarn so I ordered it and then waited for them to die and ship it obviously. Um, but this here is on their Prairie Base, which is a 100% Superwash Merino lace weight yarn. And this colorway is rose. So really, really delicate, like blushy, pinky, purple sort of color. It's so pretty once you see it knit up. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm really, really, really happy with how my color selection went just because I couldn't see it in person. I was kind of guessing, um, but I'm really happy with it so far. So like I said as well, I did drop a needle size. The pattern calls for a 3.5 millimeter AUS4 needle. And I decided to use the three millimeter, which is AUS2.5. And here, I'll hold it over my sweater because then that kind of shows the lace. So that's where I am. I really don't have much done at all. I just started this like a day and a half ago. Um, but I'm really happy with how the fabric is looking so far. Like it's definitely airy and delicate and soft, but not so airy that you can't pick up the lace, if that makes sense. Um, it's beautiful. I did start this once and really mess up and just decide to restart because I could not find where the mistake was and I kept trying to fix the mistake and I was just making it worse and I didn't have tons done so I restarted it and now it's working so I'm really 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 happy so excited to work on this I can't decide um there are a couple oopsies my yarn fell there are a couple spots in the pattern where you're able to add extra repeats if you want to make it larger um, and I'm not sure if I want to do that or not because I dropped the needle size. Um, cause the pattern does look pretty large as it is. So I might just stick with, to what they call for. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I have lots of time. So it's definitely going to take me a while. It's definitely more of a, I need to be paying attention knitting project, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm excited to work on it. Yeah, like I said, I have been looking at this pattern for so long and wanting to knit it and always chickening out because it's so much lace. Um, but now that I've started it, I'm so excited. I wish I had more done to show you guys just how pretty it is, but I definitely know by next episode in two weeks, I will have quite a bit done to be able to show you guys even more of it. And I think I missed showing, but that project is in this cute little bag with something crinkly inside apparently. But this here is from uh, that crafty little fox.
And finally, another project that's been on the needles for a while, but I definitely am still making progress on, and that's all that matters to me. Um, I have it in a large sized birch grove bag. And I definitely realized last night I don't have a progress keeper on it, and I still didn't end up putting one on it, but that's okay. I know where I was last time, so I can just point it out. Um, this is my Luminaria shawl, which Actually is my second Luminaria shawl. I've knit this up once before um, in different yarn. But this is a pattern by Larkspur Knits, uh, also known as Lindsay Fowler. And I am knitting it out of Woolbury Fiber Co. yarn and Hooker's Corner yarn. The main color that I'm using is this Woolbury Fiber Co. It is I can never get it to stop blowing out. Um, this is their Berry Cashmere base which is a, I think, 80% superwash merino yarn, 20% or 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, and this colorway is called Spring in the PNW. It was a club colorway. I'm not sure if it's available anymore, but it's just this beautiful like peachy pink color with lots of different speckles. And all the speckles match perfectly with what is going on in the shawl because this shawl uses a whole bunch of mini skeins. If you have mini skeins kicking around, this is perfect for them. Like, there's my first one. Look how pretty that is. Um, but the mini skeins that I'm using for this one are from Hooker's Corner Yarn. They are her Anne of Green Cables mini skein set. And this is where I am. So what I ended up doing is starting, the mini skeins were all numbered, which is very convenient for me to do this fade. Um, so I started with number one up at the top here, worked all the way to number 15. Yes, 15 is right here. And then I started working from 15 back up to one, basically. So last time I think I was around this range right here. So I've added on quite a bit. See if I can stretch it out so you can see part of it that I've added on. Yeah, there we go. So I've added on probably from just above this lighter section down since the last episode. And I love it so much. It's so pretty. Beautiful pattern, absolutely beautiful and very easy to follow, very easy to memorize what you're doing on every row. I don't know, it's just simple but gorgeous knitting is the best way I can put it. So I am knitting this with the Call 4 Needles, which is a 4mm US 6 needle, and I told you all of the yarn, and I will be knitting this probably exactly the same as this, which is right to pattern. Um, it's just so pretty, and the border's so pretty too. So... I think I will be sticking to pattern with this one as well. We'll see. We'll see what happens with the yarn I have, how much I'm able to use of these minis, and then I'll kind of make an executive decision. But for now, my plan is still to stick to pattern. Um, and I really should weave in these ends. <laughs> there are tons of them. Because um, I am switching mini skeins every, I think every four rows is what it is. Um, so there are a lot of ends and I really should get a head start at weaving them in. Oh, the back looks so pretty too. But yeah, that is my Luminaria shawl. It will still continue to get lots of love for sure. And uh, like I said, I don't have any socks this episode. I don't know. Um, I've just had no desire to work on them. I need to find a pattern that really, really calls to me, I think, to kind of get my ball rolling with knitting the socks again. So that is what I'm hopefully going to be able to do. We'll see. We will see. I never know what I'm going to end up working on. I think I'm going to work on one thing and then I don't touch it at all. And I think I won't touch another thing and I want to work on it. It's... I just let whatever happens happen. But anyways, that is all that I have to show you guys this episode. A short one, but hopefully a good one. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down below. If you're new here, oh wow, thank you. 
makes my day. I'm so glad you watched all the way through. And if you're not, again, thank you for joining me. It means a lot. Um, if you did like what you saw today, please consider subscribing and hitting that little like button. And I will see you guys next episode.